Celtics. Let's go one more time. Ray, Benny, analyze and try and find out where it all went wrong. All right, we see Linda Nanick on the bottom of the racetrack. Kurt Busch has to go up the racetrack just a little bit, and about that time, the 46 starts to turn to go through the travel and just turns in to the 99 of Busch. And when he turns him around, here comes Jeffrey Bodine with no place to go. That sends Jeff's truck into the catch fence. It starts it tumbling over. It goes over and over and over. Right here, we think Lonnie Rush hits it, gets it tumbling the other way, actually tears the motor and everything out of it. The truck continues to tumble on down into the trioval. And there the engine goes bounding down in the infield grass. Let's go down to Dave with our race leader, Mike Wallace. Mike, you're leading right now. You've been the man to beat all weekend long. Do you want to be in front or do you want to be third at the last lap? I don't really know what I want to be. You know, I would uh, it'd really be nice to be leading the thing and the guys running second and third get to fighting and give me some space. Problem is, you know, if you're by yourself and you get kind of a run off the corner, my truck's handling really, really good. If those guys can gang up on you, you know, you get four or five truck lanes ahead of them and then they come by sailing by you. But uh, you know, it's a real disappointment for that wreck. I'm glad to hear Jeffrey Bodine's going to be okay. You know, it's a shame for what caused the wreck, really. But, uh, you know, the truck race, I thought up to that point, was been a phenomenal race here. You know, we've got a bunch of great race fans that are trying to give them a good race. Hey, we expect the finish to be nothing less than a great finish as well. Mike Wallace will start at the head of this pack when we go green again. Out. What they did is they taped a new nose right over the old one, cut out a couple of the holes, and placed it right on top of the old one. So Joe Ruppin now has two noses on the front of his Dodge. And as we've seen already today, aerodynamics are everything here at Daytona, and especially when you're driving something the size of a huge refrigerator around this 2.5-mile oval. Now, for those of you who have uh, tuned in and wondered, wait a minute, why is the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series on ESPN2 at this hour? This race was supposed to be over at 1.30. Well, a 10-truck pileup on the trioval in which Jeffrey Bodine was injured uh, with a fractured right cheekbone uh, and uh, a fractured right wrist, right elbow, big toe, and possible ankle fractures. And this is how it all happened, Benny Parsons. About the sixth or seventh place, Gert. There's Jeffrey Bodine, bam, in the outside retaining wall, and watch as he tumbles down the straightaway. Now, again, right, another car's good truck is going to come along and hit it here. Watch and listen. From Jeff Bodine's, Jeffrey Bodine's on board. Listen. One more angle. Linda Namick, the green car, goes down. Hit Kurt Bush, go up, and they touch the 46 of Rob Morgan. And in the outside retaining wall goes Jeffrey Bodine. The truck comes totally apart. You'll see the motor flying off there on the left upper portion of your screen. It ended up about 300 feet further down the track. One more view. Look how high you got. I've been around this sport since 1960, and I've never seen a crash that a, that a vehicle was torn up that bad. There's Jeffrey Bodine after he was taken out of the truck trying to get the oxygen mask off as he's taken to the ambulance. Benny, just a terrible crash, but all of the safety equipment mandated by NASCAR, the rollover cage, the fireproof equipment, and the catch fence did its job. Let's also update you. It was multiple fractures, but he's alert and conscious over at Halifax Medical Center. He's going to make a full recovery. Jimmy Kitchens was transported as a precautionary move. Now, there were also five spectators that were transported to Halifax. They are in stable condition. Four other spectators were treated and released from the infield care center. So that is the complete update, as you now have it. With this yellow flag situation, you uh, had the option of taking tires, but our new leader, the number 60 of Andy Houston, took only fuel. So let's take a full field rundown, show you everybody who's currently out on the racetrack. It is Andy Houston, followed by Mike Wallace, Greg Biffle, his teammate Kurt Busch, then it's Martin, Noonenberger, uh, Grissom, Woodland, Setzer, Cook, McDonald, Corelli, and Rutman. Those 13 uh, all on the lead lap. Next time around, we are going to restart this race. The red flag came out at lap 56. Now, we have completed lap number 60 under caution now, and this is our fifth caution of the day. We've had records for leaders, 12, and lead changes, 22. And up until that...
big, huge crash. This was one of the most exciting races, if not the most exciting race this track has seen in years. And still there's 40 laps to go, and we're going to see a lot more passing before this race is over. Now, one of the guys you uh, did not see on that leaderboard was Jack Sprague. Well, he didn't even make it to lap 56. He went out early in one of the prior collisions. And uh, just as happened last year when Sprague won the championship in the first race of the season, he finds himself parked early in the event. Down on the back stretch, 3,000 feet. They'll head into turn three in the 31-degree banking. And let's go back and show you what happened to Jack Sprague a little bit earlier, BP. Watch the red truck. There we see the 52 of Lyndon Amick hits Jeffrey Bodine. And then the 43 spins and the 14 of Rick Crawford and the 24 of Jack Sprague, both in the outside retaining wall. And also the Brian Refter vehicle came along and hit Sprague to further ruin his day. And the 43 was damaged in that crash also. They've been working on that truck for the whole race, and they've got the body squared away, and he's going to be pretty competitive here at the end, Benny. Lyndon Amick and Jeffrey Bodine survived that first crash but uh, did not make it through the second one. We are getting ready to go back to green flag racing at Daytona International Speedway in the inaugural running of the Daytona 250.